You know, folks, you know, I didn't know whether to believe this or not when I heard about it through a journal on DeviantArt, but Googling it a little bit just now, I, I read a little bit of an article from the Wall Street Journal. And apparently, uh, what we were excited about, if you were a Hasbro fan, you know, My Little Pony, Transformers, G.I. Joe, what have you, well, apparently the hub is not going to be around much longer. Now, it doesn't mean a lot of the programming that the hub has is going to go away. No. It just means, basically, a lot of what the hub does is going to change. Let's put it this way. What's going to happen is, according to what the Wall Street Journal is saying, and I'm sure the sources are going to report the same thing, and I'll provide as many links as I have to, uh, according to what the Wall Street Journal is saying, um, and I quote, this is what the Wall Street Journal says, and I quote, Discovery Communications and toy giant Hasbro Inc. are ending the equal partnership in the hub, a cable network that had a cable network that had hoped to become a force in children's television, but made little headway against more established competitors such as Nickelodeon and the Disney Channel. Under the terms being completed, Discovery would take controlling interest in the hub and reposition the channel as a family network aimed at parents as well as children. People close to the talk said, uh, well basically that's what people close to the talk said. I say, <laughs> continuing on, Hasbro, Hasbro will retain, Hasbro will retain a large stake in the service and controls six hours of daytime programming on the network from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The makeover could take place as early as the fourth quarter. The hub is expected to be renamed Discovery Family. Launched in 2010 with a $300 investment from Hasbro for half of the network. 300? Really? The hub was designed to be an outlet for some of Hasbro's best-known toy brands, including G.I. Joe, Transformers, and My Little Pony. But it never managed to gain traction against Viacom's Nickelodeon and Walt Disney Company's Disney Channel. Nickelodeon and Disney Channel both averaged well over 1 million viewers a day, while the hub barely cracks 100,000 viewers, according to Nelson. The channel has faced some significant headwinds. Children have shifted a growing por proportion of the view of the television viewing to online services. Moreover, tougher advertising restrictions have forced many fast food and snack brands to steer clear of children programming. Another reason for the shift in strategy. Andrew Warren, Discovery's chief financial officer, acknowledged at a Bank of America Mill o. Lynch conference Tuesday that the children's television market has proved to be very competitive. Moreover, since the hub's launch, streaming services from companies such as Netflix and Amazon have moved aggressively into children's television. These developments, Mr. Warren said, prompted the hub to refocus its programming strategy on the entire family. Quote, there are fewer and fewer channels out there are fewer and fewer channels out there where children and parents can watch together. Our objective and our programming imperative is to continue to think about daytime for children and nighttime for family. Mr. Warren said there was quote hold on, just moving the mic there. Uh, Mr. Warren said there was quote what quote unquote white space in the media landscape for this target audience adding that Disney's ABC family is a wonderful channel but it's really wonderful oh hold on okay let me start off it says Mr. Warren said there was quote unquote white space in the media landscape for this target audience adding that Disney's ABC Family is a wonderful channel, but it's really for young teenage girls. The hub was a source of tension between Discovery and Hasbro. 
Hub executives often clashed with Hasbro over pro programming strategy. Hasbro regarded the partnership with Discovery as a way to drive toy sales, and that often led the toy maker to balk at supporting shows that had good ratings but weren't moving product, current and former Hub executives said. A, a Hasbro Spork... Uh, sorry, it's early. I apologize. A Hasbro sp spokeswoman said, quote, Discovery and Hasbro have enjoyed a successful relationship. And, we'll look, and we look forward to continuing to work together to bring award-winning programming to children and families. Unquote. The toy maker has only recently started to turn a small profit from the venture. At the end of last year, its stake was valued at $321 million. So I'm guessing that 300 that they... Um, Invested is actually three hundred million. Okay. Well, quote unquote, it's not their core expertise," said Eric Handler, a toy analyst at MKM Partners. The hub had been overseen by Margaret Lutchen, or Lutchen, a veteran children's TV programmer, who announced her plans to resign in June. The new channel will be placed in a business unit overseen by Henry Schelfel, group president of many of Discovery's newest and fast-growing channels, including Investigation, Investigation Discovery, Destination America, America's Heroes Channels, American Heroes Channel, and Discovery Life. Hub 3 Branding is the latest example of Discovery's efforts to overhaul underperforming channels. In the past, it had turned Discovery Health into OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network, HD Theater into Velocity, which is aimed at men who enjoy life in the fast lane, Planet Green into Destination America, a channel that, among other things, celebrates fast food and quirky jobs, UBS. With 75 million homes, the hub has a broad reach. However, pay TV distributors are starting to push back at having to carry such low-rated services. Discovery will need to increase the audience for the revamped service or risk having it dropped when its contracts come up for renewal. While Hasbro's presence and operational role at the network are expected to decline, it may seek other outlets for its content. It has had on-again, off-again talks with Time Warner Inc.'s Cartoon Network about being an outlet for the toy manufacturer's show. Okay, so basically what that means, um, first of all, for any of you that might be a My Little Pony fan, it basically means that show will not go anywhere. That show will remain, but as a part of Discovery Family. I mean, if it says here in fine print, right at the beginning of the article, it says right here in fine print at the beginning of the article, it says the same thing. It says the same thing as it said in the article. It says Hasbro will retain Hasbro will retain a large stake in the service and control and control. Well, my iPod just died there. Thanks, iPod. What well, basically it says it will control basically a large chunk of the programming block from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that My Little Pony Friendship and Magic is one of the highest rated shows, if not one of the more popular shows. So basically that means that when this change occurs, My Little Pony will still be on the air, air on the ne on the soon to be renamed Discovery Family, but it'll only be during the day. And you know what? <laughs> Honestly, I think we probably all saw this coming when, when we all think about it. I mean, at first when the hub was announced, that it was going to be an outlet, that it was going to be a place where we could finally see, once again on television, shows like Jam and Transformers Generation 1 and G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, the original G.I. Joe, and some other shows like, like Tiny Toons and Animaniacs, when those came around. You know, it was like, hey, great, we're finally getting these shows back on the air. And hey, they're on a major network. They're on a major co cable channel, major cable network. We were all happy. We were all... Ecstatic. 
I mean, I remember doing a video about it, which you can find here on my channel. But, as the years went on, I think we slowly started to notice that the, ha that this, that the hub network was slowly going away from what made it what it was. I mean, essentially, I think it was supposed to be just basically, originally the idea was to be a 24-hour network aimed at kids with cartoons and kid-related programming. That's what it was supposed to be. But instead, I don't know who got into the ear of this Margaret lady or who started throwing some influence. Maybe this Henry guy did. I don't know. But somebody had some kind of say in that. It said, you know what? Let's take a lot of what's making this network very popular and let's move it to all these different outlets and let's focus more on this and that and this and that and this and that. It's like, it's like before you knew it, you were getting shows like Family Ties. Not that there's nothing wrong with that. ALF, which again, nothing's wrong with that. But still, you started getting these shows. You started to get shows like, what, what else is there? Um, like some of the Sabrina shows, live action wise. And it's, it's like, what is going on here? You started getting these game shows like Family Game Night or Family This. Or that. It's like, what? You know, what happened to the original plan of this is just supposed to be a kid's show, a kid's network? It's supposed to have kid's cartoons and stuff like that. What happened to that strategy? You know, if they would have just stuck to that, they'd be okay. I mean, if I, if, I mean, if I was Hasbro, and I, put some st and I put about 300, probably not 300, but maybe 300 million, if not more so, into this company, into this investment into this partnership, I should have at least put something in there in the fine print as well saying, hey, look, no matter what, you cannot add any programming that's not Hasbro related. Well, not just that, but, okay, basically I would have done this. If I was Hasbro, I would have added into the contract in fine print or something that they cannot add any live action programming without their consent. <laughs> Without their say so, without them saying, "Okay, you can add, you can add uh, Xena, Warrior Princess. You can add Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. <laughs> you know, you can do all that." But they did. But here's the question: Did they do that with Hasbro's consent? We don't know. I don't think they did. I don't think they did. Did they add family ties with eyes when that happened for a little while with? You know, the consent? No, they didn't. Did that last long on there? No, it didn't. Why? Because it's now on the UP network. Did... What else did they add? Well, I know ALF's still on there, but still, did they add a lot of... Did they add certain things that need to, didn't need to be on there? Of course they did. Basically, whoever got into... Whoever had some influence over there basically got into the ear of somebody, like this Margaret lady or whoever, and said, Hey! We should put this at this time, and that will make it a success. It's like, no, it won't, ding dong. Like, no, it won't. I mean, I mean, in all honesty, you were doing good with what you had. I mean, let me let me give you guys let me give you guys a little let me let, let me let me give you people listening a little bit of an example. You have, like I mentioned earlier, and like they mentioned in that article. Well, I was trying to say that what they mentioned in the fine print of that Wall Street Journal article on it. My Little Pony Friendship is, Ma Friendship is Magic is the highest is the highest grossing show they have right now on that network. My, probably the most popular and financially the most successful. That's what it is. That's what it is. And even before, and even around the same time, even though it didn't last a little, even though it didn't last as long, Transformers Prime, which was a hybrid of the live-action movies and a bit of the ori original show, in a sense, well, not the original show, but a hybrid of other shows that came before it, it lasted three seasons, and it ended with a movie called Beast Hunters, and and yet that's not enough to make you realize, oh shit. We have a we have a, a a monster here. We have a hit. We have a a good network here. We have a good partnership. You know because of why? 
Why? Because you're not cracking the 1 million mark? Look, 100,000 views. Yeah, that may not be a lot, but that's still good, in a sense, for, for a network that's been around for that long. I mean, let, let's be honest. This network was a different network before it became the hub. What was it? Discovery something? I, I can't remember. It was Discovery something before it became the hub. All right? I think it was Discovery Kids, I think. Yeah, that's what it was. Discovery Kids before it became the hub. And did Discovery Kids crack anything? No, it didn't. That was all due to the fact they had a partnership with NBC. Did that crack anything? No. No, it didn't. Did it crack 100,000 views? 1 million views? No, but it, st it stayed around. It, it sticked around. So, did it, did, did, it, uh, did it hurt itself in the long run? No. No, it, it didn't hurt itself in the long run. It basically helped itself evolve. And it became the hub. I mean, it was basically the perfect catalyst to make the hub network. But the thing is, you cannot make a successful network if you keep, re you keep changing things about the network. I mean, I remember when the network first came on, I pretty much knew exactly when Jem was going to be on there, G.I. Joe was going to be on there, Transformers, Friendship and Magic. Heck, I even knew when Friendship is Magic was going to be on there. And this is from somebody that doesn't watch it as much. If at all. I knew when that was going to be on. I knew when some of these original shows, like that uh, what, Twisted Tales show was going to be on. I knew when Transformers Prime might be on. I mean, I knew all of that. I knew all... I knew... All of that, and I know some people listening knew that too. But all of us, I mean, heck, I knew when Renegades was, G.I. Joe Renegades was going to be on. You know, I knew all that. And yet, for some odd reason, somebody, like I said, got into the ear of somebody else and said, let's rearrange the scheduling. Well, now, all you can, well, now, the only way you could see Jem at night, I mean, Jem on the hub, is to wa wake up at 3 freaking a.m. in the morning. Yeah. They have Gem, G.I. Joe, Transformers Prime, and Rescue Bots in the morning. And I mean real early in the morning. Basically, you're still in bed morning. Whose idea was that? I mean, let, let, let me see something here. Let me see something. Again, like I said, whose idea was that? If I can get the hub up here. It seems IFC channels showing... Um, Classic Batman Marathon from 1960s. Pretty cool. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. 813 Hub HD. You have all these shows. I mean, I'm looking at two right now. Littlest Pet Shop that started with the Hub Network. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Magic started with the Hub Network. You had this Sabrina cartoon that came on, like, what, last year? Rescue Bots, which came on about two years ago. Transformers. And then, here's what gets me. Here's what gets me. I'm looking from like almost a 7 o'clock to almost 11 o'clock standard, right? And then take a look what takes over. Family game night from 11 to 12? Whose idea is to schedule it then? Goosebumps? I can understand doing that like at noon. And Spooksville and The Haunting? You know, I can understand doing that. And then you do movies at 2 o'clock? Okay, if it's an animated one like Barnyard, I can understand. And then you're doing Parents Just Don't Understand, a reality show? A reality show on the Hub Network. Parents Just Don't Understand. And then you do Spaceballs? Okay, that's alright. That's a sort of a family movie, but still Spaceballs on the Hub Network? Problem Child? Blossom? Which recently came Sister Sister? Now, here's what I'm talking about by the scheduling being crazy. And I live on the Pacific Time Zone, right? Shizau, which is one of the shows that came out, one of the Hub Originals. 1 a.m. Aquabat Super Show, which I still think is a unnecessary show. Stupid in a sense. That's just my opinion. 1.30. Fraggle, Wa Fraggle Rock, the original 1980s Muppet Show. 2 a.m. And that was one of the uh, founding shows on the network. Adventures of Chuck and Friends, which is a t educational like show for kids. Educational like show for kids. 2:30 a.m. Care Bears, 
Adventures in Wonderland, 3 a.m. Strawberry Shortcakes, and these are shows that were created specifically for the hub. Or had a hub, yeah, specifically for the hub. Strawberry Shortcakes, Eggs Berry Adventures, whatever it is. 3.30 a.m. Tiny Toon Adventures, which recently came out, or recently joined the network about a year or two ago. 4 a.m. And 4.30 a.m. Pound Puppies, which was one of the Hub Originals, 5 a.m. and 5.30. And then, what could be more of reasonable timing, depending on how you look at it, Secret Millionaires, 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m., Transformers Rescue Bots, and you get back to what it was before. The, the thing is, you take... The thing is, you take a look at the schedule and you're like, you're probably thinking, what is with these people? What is the problem doing this? What is with the schedule? And believe me, I wish I knew. I mean, take a look at this. Take a look at this. You want to know when the children block is? Take a look at this. For the weekday standards, like Monday through Friday, G.I. Joe Renegades at midnight. Kadudo, Clash of, whatever, Duel Masters, 12.30. Shazal, 1 a.m. Acrobats, 1.30. Fragowar, 2. Chuck and Friends, 2.30. Gem, 3 a.m. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, the original G.I. Joe, G1, 3.30 a.m. Transformers Prime, 4 a.m. Rescue Bots, 4.30. Superhero Squad Show, 5 a.m. Dan vs. 5.30. Animaniacs. I guess you could probably consider that more logical, since some kids do get up and tr get up and want to watch cartoons before they go to school. Animaniacs, 6 a.m. Tiny Toons, 6:30. Then Family Game Night at 7 a.m. in the morning. Seriously. Then Secret Millionaires at 8. Strawberry at 8:30. Strawberry at 9. My Little Pony. My Little Pony. My Little Pony. Little Pet Shop. Little Pet Shop. Pound Puppies, Pound Puppies, Sabrina, Little's Pet Shop, Little's Pet, my, my Little Pony, My Little Pony, Kid President, and then a movie, Good Boy. That, you you, you kind of see what I'm saying, folks. You kind of see what I'm saying. It's like, okay, some of them look all right. Like, they could be in the, a good position and all that, like an understanding position. But not really. I mean, honestly, folks. I mean, honestly, folks, when, 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 you, when you look at that scheduling that I just mentioned, I was, I was just looking at it in real time, what does that tell you? It tells you, obviously, whoever was put in charge of the scheduling, or whoever was in the ear of this Margaret lady, or whoever does the scheduling for the Hub Network, doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, seriously, you're going to start a children's block at midnight? On a night before they have to go to school? Are you crazy? Here's what I would do. Here's what I would do. Instead of giving Hasbro 9 to 3, because pretty much a lot of kids are in school at that time, so I don't know whose idea that is. What, because it's daytime? Okay, fine. Here's what I would do instead. I would give Hasbro 3 to 9, and I would use that 9 to 3, and then whatever after 9 o'clock for family or, for fa or adults, or whatever you want to call it. I would use, basically, I mean, this is what I would do. You want to give them that programming block? 3 to 9 is better. Why? Here's why. 9 a.m., 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. You essentially just give them 6 hours of, of television. That's it. You'd be doing the same thing if you gave them 3 to 9. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Three to nine makes more sense. And, oh, by the way, the kids are home from school at that time. If you're trying to go back to that method of thinking. Let me let me remind you of something, too. You know that My Little Pony show you guys, Hasbro, ha the Hub has? Guess what? There's a lot of people my age. There's a lot of people that are preteens, teenagers. There's a lot of people that are going into that age range, like my soon-to-be 11-year-old nephew. They're into that stuff. Alright? And they want 
to see it at an appropriate time, they could see it. And what about Saturdays and Sundays? What are you going to do? Just give them six hours in the morning and that's it? How's that going to work? Oh, 9 a.m. to 3. Okay, fine. Uh, don't you realize maybe they go out on Saturdays and Sundays? They got church on Sundays? Does that not ring a bell? I mean, quite honestly, this to me is, you know, it, it's like I said about TNA. You know, how I said that, you know, in, the, in that audio video, how I say TNA's got no one else but themselves to blame for this situation. I'll say this. Whoever gave the okay to do the scheduling the way they've done it and to add the programs they have that have been that have come and gone and is still there, they don't know what they're doing. Discovery, in a sense, doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, if you're going to have an equal partnership, you should have an equal stake. You should have something written in the contract that says, look, it says, look, this is how think we want to have things done so that everybody's equal. I mean, why do you think some of these networks that Discovery already owns ends up changing into different networks? Because nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows how to strategize and schedule. It's like they said, that's part of the problem, the strategizing. Like whoever came up with the strategy of saying, oh, let's put a lot of the children's programming out starting around midnight. Seriously? Really? You think kids are going to stay up that long? Kids are not going to stay up that long, and that's a guarantee. Parents will make sure of it. Now, I I'm not going to disagree with what they also said in this article. I'm not going to disagree with the fact that, yes, Netflix, Hula, Amazon, all these streaming services that you can get through your Xbox systems, your PlayStation systems, your Rukas, your Androids, your Samsungs, your Galaxies, your iPhones, your Kindles, whatever. I'm not denying, and even on your computer if you felt like it, I'm not denying that they haven't contributed to the, to, to the decline of a lot of, of, you know, to the decline of children's programming, okay? I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that, but here's why, though, they have helped in that manner if you want to go in that direction. Here's why, okay? They've helped in that manner because they give people a variety of children, they give kids and families a variety of stuff. Alright? I mean, where else, like on Netflix or Amazon or Hulu or whatever, where else can you find Transformers Generation 1 and, oh, Sonic the Hedgehog sat a.m. at the, you know, at the, in, the same, in the same place? Huh? Where else can you find G.I. Joe Generation 1 and Vi Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Hmm? Where else can you find Brave Star, if I think that's on there? Where else can you find, I believe, He-Man and She-Ra? Nowhere else. And you see, that's what hurts them. That's what hurts them. Because they're not realizing, you know what? If we're going to succeed and sort of be like a contemporary, modern, and retro-like network for kids, with animated shows that are new and as well as from the past, hmm, what can we add to make that happen? Uh... Duh. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You add shows that people like myself that have grown up on know about, as well as you add along with what you're trying to introduce to the new kids, to the new generation. That's what you do. I mean, wouldn't it be something? Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be something? to at least, oh, I don't know, let's say, wouldn't it be something to, oh, I don't know, let's say, uh, show My Little Pony Generation 1, the 1980s show, around the same block, back to back with Friendship and Magic. Friendship is Magic. Huh? Wouldn't that be the smart thing to do? Because that way, not only are you introducing this new show but you're also endorsing this new show by saying, here, we have the original we want to show you first. So you guys can get an idea of where it came from. Hello? Smart strategy right there. You know, smart strategy there. 
and as well as like, oh, I don't know, oh, let's air maybe some of the, let's air as part of our new movie theater thing that we also introduced, because I think that was at the beginning too, when Hub started, uh, let's air My Little Pony the movie, jeez, what a smart thing to do there. I mean, if you can end up doing Transformers back to Generation 1 back to back with Transformers Prime and Rescue Bots, I think you could do the same for My Little Pony. I think you could do the same with G.I. Joe. Heck, there's, there's logic there. I think maybe what? You showed G.I. Joe the movie once, maybe? Or if, out, uh, if at all? What strategy there? Oh, let's put G.I. Joe Generation 1, Royal American Hero. Let's even add in the G.I. Joe Dick animated show. Let's add in uh, Sigma 6. Sorry, I hit the mic there with my hand. But let's add in Sigma 6, which I thought was okay. As well as with Renegades. And oh my gosh. You're introducing them all to these different aspects of G.I. Joe. Even add in G.I. Joe Extreme if you felt like it. And oh my gosh. You're introducing all these other aspects of G.I. Joe. While endorsing at the same time the new Renegade show. Gee. How many more people would have been interested? I'm, ju I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying, you know. I'm just saying. And what about Jim? Okay, fine. Nothing you could do about Jim, but... Oh, gee. Maybe if you did a whole freaking marathon of her. And not just did a marathon for the summer and not just held back for a while. In fact, put her at a time where everybody could be introduced to her. And oh, I don't know... Maybe get a show that's similar to kind of tie into it. Like, let's say, oh, I don't know, Beverly Hills Teens or whatever you call it. I mean, I'm just saying. Just saying, folks. And, oh, wait a minute. You have other shows. You have, like, Inhumanoids. You have, like, Bigfoot. You have Visionaries. Oh, my gosh. Even though they were 13 episodes each, you could have aired those. But did you know? You didn't. And look, I'm not trying to, to look. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to totally put the blame on Hasbro and Discovery, and say it's entirely their fault. All right. I'm not really trying to put the blame on them, but you know, they needed. They. I mean, honestly, they needed to strategize better. And they need to schedule better. And they need to get the right people in the right positions and not listen to certain people saying, oh, well, this is a better way to schedule and you know certain shows and this is the better time slot to put them on. Because guess what? It's not. Just because people have DVRs and all that doesn't mean it's the best time. You know, best time frame and all, right, all that, all right? It's not. Because let me tell you this. I know from experience that if you have a DVR, if not one DVR or several... Sometimes people like to use those D several DVRs or that one DVR to record their programming. And sometimes they'll record, they're going to have two shows that are going to come on at the same time that they're going to want to watch and record. If they come on at a time that they're either at work or they're, they're asleep, they're going to want to record it. Okay? Smart strategy. The smartest strategy is basically saying, hey, look. This is when we should schedule certain programming because we know it's going to get the most views. You know, I'm I'm just saying, folks. You know, it it, you know, it's it to me. I'm not totally surprised. This is. I mean, I'm a little surprised, but not when I think about it. I shouldn't really be surprised because of the fact that when you take a look at how they schedule certain shows in the later years, in the later years, and as odd as that is to say about the hub, that. It shouldn't really surprise me that something like this has come about. I don't think it should surprise anybody else. I mean, it's just something that I think the Hub and Discovery, Hasbro and Discovery, they needed to work out a better strategy. They needed to work out a better partnership between each other. And like I said, they needed to basically work on better scheduling and getting the right people in the right areas. You know, it's kind of like when I look at that, when I think about how they schedule shows and all that and how that's kind of hurt them. If not majority, as you know, not kind of, you know, basically has kind of hurt them, but in reality has really hurt them. When I look at that schedule scheduling, it's like it reminds me of my job scheduling. Sometimes, you know, you have 
the right people in the right positions, but you don't have enough people scheduled. And that hurts you and your business as much as it hurts the customers. And that's kind of like what, and that's kind of what Hasbro and Discovery has to have to look at in in the long run. In the long run, they need to look at the fact that their strategy in the long run has hurt their customers more than anything. Because at first it's like, oh, good, you have, you know. Transformers Generation 1, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, G.I. Joe Generation 1, Gem, you know, all these shows that you put on the hub that fans have been wanting to see back on television. At first you put them at decent hours, and now all of a sudden they're just scattered about. And it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. You even tried to, you, you even tried to grab a, a, a piece of the pizza pie, if you will, in the Ninja Turtle franchise by airing the next mutation. And I don't, and I don't see that anymore. The point is, I think what Hasbro should have done is, in all honesty, they should have added into the contract that, if without the consent, Discovery cannot add any other programmings that may or may not be hub Hasbro related and may not be, you know. Children, children related at all. I mean, if I was Hasbro, I would want to get. I would. I, I would have basically, like I said earlier, I would have added in the contract that you got to, you know, pass. You got to present the show you want to bring on to the network to me first, and if I'm okay with it, go ahead and do it. If not, I don't. It can't be aired on here. I'm sorry. Because if I have a massive stake in this, in this claim, you will. If I have a massive stake in this claim, then I should have some say. And that's the truth. If someone came to me, and let's say I was trying to create a new network that combined several different things. Or let's say I wanted to create a network that was a retro-like network. That its main focus is to air retro animation from the 70s, the 80s, and even the 90s. A majority, well, mainly 70s and 80s. Let's put it that way. That a majority of it is 70s and 80s cartoons only. And someone came to me and they said, "Oh, well, we have this show from the 1990s or the 2000s that we think would be great on this network." You know what I would say to them? I would say no. I'd say this main, this network's main focus is retro. This main, this network's main focus is cartoons from the 70s and the 80s. That's not coming on here. And and that would be the honest truth. That would be the honest truth. You know, if, let's say... You know, let's say if some of these online video networks... Or video services... Wanted to create their own cable channels in the future. Alright? Let's say that was to happen. Let's say... Blimp said, okay, we're going to create the Blimp cable network. And they took a lot of the shows that they have on their... Blimp online services like 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 uh, Nostalgia Critic and Linkara and I think maybe even Angry Video Game Nerds a part of that maybe not but let's say they did it or let's say the YT that the YT did that or, or, or Vimo did that let's say any of those did that okay and they created their own cable network if I was them and let's say somebody wanted to present a show that was you know that didn't fit my criteria of what was going to be on that network or be on that cable network, I would say no. You know, if someone wanted to present to me, oh, well, we have the retro and classic, um, let's see, kind of thing. Oh, we have the uh, classic Press You Luck show. We have the classic episodes of Press Your Luck. Do you like that on your uh, Blimp network, or on your Blimp cable network, or your Vimo cable network, or your, you know, YT cable network? You know what I would say? I'd say no, because it doesn't fit the criteria that this is a network, this is a cable network for original programming that's come off, that's been on the web, and now is going to get national cable exposure. That would be the strategy to that. Same as what I said about a retro animation network, or maybe even a retro live action network. You can only air shows in the 70s, 80s on those networks. And that's it. Maybe you can make an exception for a few early 90s shows, and that's okay. 
early to mid 90s shows and that's okay but a majority of the time it's mostly 70s and 80s I mean why do you think why do you think the uh, the spin-off channel for boom for Cartoon Network has been at times getting some flack why do you think Cartoon Network itself has been getting some flack because they've changed things around in the past and now they're realizing oh my gosh you know this is not what we were originally supposed to be about we're supposed to be about this and they're slowly getting back to those areas and I applaud and I applaud Cartoon Network and the spin-off channel Boomerang for doing that for the fact that they're trying to get back to what brought them to the dance originally when they were born or when they came into existence the fact is when you're planning something when you're planning to create a network well one of your main if not your it well one of your main if not the main focus of your network are shows based around toys like and original shows that could end up as toys like Transformers, My Little Pony, Gem and some of these original shows and programming that you came up with, G.I. Joe you know whatever if my main focus if the majority of the focus of my new network is that then I focus on that I don't focus on anything else I don't allow other, other, any other shows to show up on that network unless they have some kind of relation now you could say well Hercules and Xena had a relation yeah they did but guess what they weren't really kid programming were they you could say in a sense they were because they were fantasy yeah that's true but in a sense they weren't yeah they had an animated film but did you ever see the animated film no, on, the, on the hub network theater no I didn't neither did anybody else I mean, the fact is there could be exceptions if you want them to be, but if you your main primary focus is shows that are Hasbro related, were created specifically for that network, or were ha like I say Hasbro properties, and were created specifically like say Friendship and Magic and Renegades and Prime, and you were also adding in maybe the shows that, you know. They, you know, they sprung from, like the original G.I. Joe, the original Transformers. You know, fine. It's okay, do it. You want to bring in Jim? Fine, go ahead and do it. You know, you want to bring in, which, well, I think they should have brought in, but you thinking of bringing in something like Inhumanoids, Visionaries, or maybe even Mask? Go ahead and do it. The, the thing is... Like I said, I think what happened in the long run is they got away from what originally put them on the map and that's what's causing them to have to change again. And you know what? They got no one else but themselves to blame. And that's the truth. I mean, yeah, I admit, like I said earlier, things, places like Netflix, Amazon, you know, Hula, and a lot of these other online services that provide kids programming or at least a section for kids you know, yeah, that's kind of hurting the business, but you know what? Maybe it's time a lot of these cable networks, like The Hub, took a lesson from Netflix and, and Amazon and Hula and said, you know what? We need to go in that direction. We need to provide a kids-only network, and that's it. With kids' animated programming, and that's it. And if Hasbro is looking for another partner, good luck to them. You want to try Cartoon Network? Go for it all po more power to you but if I'm you Hasbro here's what I do I think what Hasbro should do is invest the money in creating an all new original cable channel that's what they should do they should create the Hasbro network and then that way they can put all the shows that they want on that network they can you know add all new original programming they can buy the rights or partner up, partner up and license the rights to air other programming on there and I guarantee you that may help in the long run because at least they will have their own Pacific Network they won't have to worry about and you know and what they would need to do is also get the right people in there and once they do that hopefully I think and again I think that's a strategy and a direction they should go in hopefully they won't have nothing else to worry about because again having your own channel your own network with no strings whatsoever, be worth it.
in the long run. You may think that's impossible. Well, guess what? It's not, Nothing's impossible, believe me. So, but that's just my take on the whole situation with Hub, um, the Hub network, you know, you know, can't being canceled and replaced by Discovery Family. But who knows? Maybe maybe that won't happen. Maybe things will change and maybe something will work out. But that's that's my take on it. So I was a long, long one. I know it was a bit of a rant and a you know opinionated thing, but. Uh, just that's what I have to say about it, folks. So take your time in listening to this. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you all later.